embattled retail giant Steinhoff has resumed its annual general meeting in Amsterdam. Wurz University's Yanni Rousseau says it's important for the company to overcome its problems. Professor Rousseau joins us now from our Pretoria studios. Uh, Professor, good evening and thank you for your patience out there in Pretoria. How did this company that was once uh, described as the IKEA of Africa and uh, Marcus Yoste described as the Warren Buffett of South Africa, how did it get to this point? What happened? Uh, good evening and good evening to the viewers. Well, what happened at Steinhoff is clearly there was an implosion after a December 2017 when it became clear that the com company's profits and financial statements had been misstated before. And as a result of that, it's at the moment impossible to put any value on that company. We all had high expectations of today's annual general meeting, but we really got very little from it. My impression is that it was an attempt to uh, protect the previous board and the remaining management of the company rather than to disclose more information to shareholders that were not known before. What, what gave you that impression that this was an attempt to protect the members of the previous board? Well, no additional information had been made known. It was announced that the 2017 financial statements of the company, which was under the watch of the previous board, will now only be published by the end of 2018, which means 15 months after the event of the financial year. So clearly, what did the previous board do that there can't be financial statements? The board is ultimately responsible for these statements. Secondly, there's the matter of the PwC report, which is now a full investigation into the company, and it was hinted today that the full report might not be disclosed to shareholders. We must always remember that shareholders in the first instance pay you for that report. So the board and management of Steinhoff is clearly hiding something and is not understanding the importance of communicating with its shareholders and its stakeholders. And I get the feeling that we're in for more shocks. Steinhoff should get its communication act together and should stop hiding information from its shareholders. Did you hear anything from today's uh, board proceedings that relates to, I know you talk about the PwC investigation, but did you hear anything that relates to the investigation by the Hawks, um, by the uh, Directorate of Priority Crime Investigation? No, that was not uh, a, an important point of discussion. The PwC report attracted a lot of attention and f uh, that is where the attention is focused because at this point in time everybody desperately needs financial statements of Steinhoff in order to be able to put a true value on the company so that uh, shareholders but more importantly, the stakeholders holding Steinhoff shares through their pension funds can understand what their holding is really worth. And this is the information that the board owes to shareholders and stakeholders. So you've had a number of resignations, uh, the Professor Rousseau, uh, the main one of course being Marcus Joste, the former CEO, but you've also seen someone like uh, Christoph Wisse, who was the chairperson of the company, also resigning. In terms of accountability, are you satisfied that it, you know, the buck stops with the individuals that have resigned thus far, or are we likely to see more heads roll uh, and perhaps even sterner action, and should we? Well, uh, I'm of the impression that uh, Dr. Steve Boyson, who was elected with a very sh small uh, majority today, is no longer fit to serve on the board of Steinhoff, should definitely step down. I'm also of the opinion that Heather Son is not fit to serve on the board, and my reasons are that they are insisting on extra payments for work done for mistakes made under their watch for a period while they were on the board. I must hasten to add that this matter would have been put to shareholders today. It was taken off the agenda, but Steinhoff made a sense announcement on the JSE sense system that this proposal will be put to its remuneration committee after this AGM. Now, in my view, these board members are not entitled to extra fees. To the contrary, they should repay the fees that they've earned in 2017 because they are responsible, as I've said, for their financial statements and we don't have 
2017 financial statements. So what did we pay them for in 2017? They have nothing to produce or show for that. So they, they are clearly out of touch with what shareholders expect from them. Is the issue of being opaque um, part of the perhaps the corporate culture at Steinhoff? I, I, and I guess perhaps the question I'm asking is, could you even link it to the the, the way that the company is 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 founded and uh, and uh, sort of headquartered in one country and listed in two different countries? Is opaqueness uh, part of the problem? Well, many uh, companies have headquarters in one place, have listings on more than one uh, exchange. But what clearly happened here is that the board failed completely in its corporate governance role and had no control, according to what the board claims, over its CEO. It's a very dangerous situation when a board has no control over its CEO and in this case it seems to be uh, too much trust put in Mr. Marcus Euster at the time that he was CEO of the company. But from a structural point of view with listings in different countries and headquarters in South Africa, I cannot see a problem with that as long as good corporate governance is applied and as long as the proper controls are in place. But it seems that this board has simply given Mr. Marcus Euster a free reign to do whatever he wanted to do. So what other lines of inquiry would you like to see uh, pursued here, Prof? Uh, you've mentioned, of course, the, 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 the um, senior leadership uh, at Steinhoff that you feel are no longer fit uh, to hold office. Um, what lines of inquiry should be pursued to, to sort of hold those particular uh, leaders that you mentioned to account in the coming weeks and months? Well, it is important to figure out where the criminal charges must be brought against anybody, whether they have uh, conducted illegal activities. It's very important to check on the ethical conduct of board members and management of Steinhoff, whether all the activities were within ethical norms. And then lastly, it was a massive corporate failure uh, in terms of corporate governance. I have to add that I'm very unhappy that the Lloyds had again been appointed as auditors of the company because the statements done by the Lloyds for 2016 will have to be restated. So the Lloyds was clearly not up to the job. And in my view it was time to get a new auditing company for Steinhoff so that we can sh be sure that the company starts with a clean slate. It would have been important for governance in my view going forward not to have the Lloyds again as the auditors of the company. Mm. As you mentioned your concerns about Deloitte, uh, I mean it raises the issue that was uh, raised a bit earlier on in the week by uh, Auditor General Kimi Makwetu who basically feels that the accounting and auditing profession in South Africa is in the gutter. Do you share that view and uh, how much of, you know, to what extent does this compound uh, issues of, of poor governments, such uh, governance such as we, we've seen with Steinhoff? The audit profession in South Africa has really not conducted itself well and then I must hasten to add in certain instances like uh, VBS Bank and KPMG and Steinhoff and Deloitte. It is dangerous to taint the whole audit profession with a broad brush but there are definitely examples now where the audit profession failed South Africans. Steinhoff as I've said is one example, VBS is one example. This does not mean that the whole audit profession is fraud or should be uh, distrusted but it reinforces the point that we need to see regular rotation of audit firms f uh, at big companies. Big companies cannot stay with the same audit firm for too long. It seems to me that the relationship between the board, the management and the auditors become in the end too much of a cozy one. So the one lesson out of this is rotation of audit firms going forward. But I hasten again that we see audit lapses, but we should not taint the whole audit profession as a result of that. There are many auditors and audit companies in South Africa of the highest integrity. 
So just as the final question then, we've seen of course the massive losses that the various shareholders, including the, those that hold shares on behalf of uh, government employees, pension funds, uh, have suffered as a result of all of this. Can Steinhoff survive this and should it survive this? And can the shareholders get some kind of sense of justice from all of this in your view? Well, in my view, it's not clear whether Steinhoff will survive this. We will only know this at the end of the year when the 2017 financial statements are published. I hope that the 2018 statements will be published with the 2017 statements because we will then be one accounting period further. Uh, whether Steinhoff will recover full value, I doubt that. Whether there will be recoverable value, as I've said, we will see how this plays out in months to come. For the sake of shareholders and stakeholders, especially people holding these shares for their pension funds, I can only trust that some value will be recovered. Professor Yanni Rousseau, thank you so much for joining us from Vets University, joining us from uh, Pretoria Studios.